this is big breaking emergency news flights are now being grounded and drones are being grounded as well the military has taken over the airspace and this is coming all the way from the top from the federal government and the transportation secretary is ordering this and they are warning people do not fly so let's get into the details here really quick guys please just hit that like and hit that subscribe i'm posting multiple videos a day keeping you guys updated on this big urgent news and it just helps to get these warnings out i appreciate that so this was just issued today by the transportation secretary pete Buttigieg, and he is warning people do not fly your drones do not fly your planes do not fly your helicopters do not fly any of these things right now or there's going to be big problems and they're shutting down the airspace surrounding hurricane helene and the emergency response rescue areas right this has been the backbone of the emergency response the past week is people giving their own resources their own aircraft their own supplies to help rescue people people donating money to fund these things all right this is what's been going on the past week it's all been volunteers and the federal government has shut down all airspace around these natural disasters and they're saying no helicopters no planes and no drones even can fly and people are using these drones to make critical deliveries i just saw a video earlier today of people delivering baby formula with these drones right giving baby formula to people to babies that haven't had formula in a week right so this is a major situation i want you to listen to what the transportation secretary said really quick and then we will also get into what the georgia governor said relating to the situation too he said that he was quote outraged all right but listen to the transportation secretary really quick our goal is to make sure that funding is no obstacle to very quickly getting people the relief that they need and deserve. There's also some safety issues that come up. For example, uh, temporary flight restrictions to make sure that uh, the airspace is clear for any uh, flights uh, or drone activity that, that might be uh, involved in helping to uh, uh, allow those emergency responders to do their job. All right. So he said flights and drones, and this is going on until October 10th this notum is being issued there's actually multiple different notums all throughout the country right now but there are a bunch around asheville north carolina and the surrounding disaster zones in tennessee georgia virginia and west virginia and they're not even letting people fly drones anymore now right they're shutting it down why are they shutting it down i just saw a video earlier today too of a guy that rescued people that were shining a mirror all right they were shining a mirror and he saw them and he said he had to loop around six times to land because the area was so small it was like a little tiny pasture in the middle of the hills here right in the woods and he had to loop around six times and landed with this helicopter and brought these people supplies food all the stuff he gave him a chainsaw generator gas food all the stuff and save their life but now he's not allowed to do that all right i was reporting on this one guy got threatened with arrest already from the fire chief he was trying to save people and he had to leave the other person behind it was an elderly couple he rescued one person and had to leave the other person behind because they were threatening him with arrest right so why do you guys think this is happening i know the military needs this airspace but think about it the military is moving in and out all day they're moving all over the country all day think of all the planes that are flying all over the country all day long and we make it work logistically we should be able to figure this out all right and make this work listen to what the georgia governor said really quick here too he said that he was quote outraged about the response 
when the first uh, emergency declarations came down, there was only 11 counties in that. Uh, a lot of people were outraged, including me, because there was such devastation in, in, you know, up to 90 counties. Uh, so we called the White House. We spoke to the to the president's chief of staff, the, the FEMA administrator, and said, look, you're sending the signal that, that you're not paying attention to some of these rural communities. All right, so he was saying that only 11 of the 90 counties were under the initial emergency disaster declarations, okay? And FEMA also just announced that they're running out of money, right? They're saying that they're out of money for this year. And they're not going to have enough money to pay for the hurricanes. It's just... Everything is just wild, right? We have all this money for every other crisis, every other emergency that's happening. We can pay for it all. All these different things. We're Think of all the people that have arrived in our country and think of all the apartments and hotels and everything that have been paid for, okay? Why aren't people here being put up in hotels, all right? All these, there are over 200 hotels and apartments, things like that in New York City alone, housing migrants, okay? Why do we not have these people being housed that are homeless now, US citizens, their homes destroyed, their lives destroyed. There's really no going back to some of these places. It's just totally wiped out. It's gonna take years and years to even get the infrastructure up to par. And then everyone just has to rebuild, or right? it's gonna be a major backlog. It's gonna take forever. People didn't even have flood insurance. Nobody was prepared for this or ready for this. So, they might just have lost everything. Right? They might have to file bankruptcy or something because they still owe money on this house that doesn't even exist anymore. Okay, That's what a lot of people are looking at right now. And we should at least be able to give them shelter, food, and take care of them. All right? So let me know what you guys think. Please just hit it up for me down there. It helps to get these warnings out. I appreciate that. Just so people know, all right, they're issuing this NOTAM alert, the snow fly zone, and they're saying flights in this area have been grounded, right? So kind of strange why they would do this. And people are reporting too that their donations are being taken by the government organizations, okay? So they're saying, hey, give us the donations, we're going to distribute it. Okay, some circumstances that might be better, but other circumstances, it could be worse. These could be very personalized donations for certain family members, certain people, certain communities, and they're not able to get to them now, and their donations are just taken and put in a like overall pool of donations that are going to be distributed as they see fit, right? So... That's what's going on there. And people are also reporting that some people are taking advantage of the situation and actually trying to steal and loot and things like this. They're stealing from people's homes that are destroyed, that are wide open, right? They're stealing donations, right? There's gangs that are forming. And people are taking advantage of people right now, too, right? That's boots on the ground people are reporting that and people are targeting donation trucks so i hope you guys are staying prepared and staying stocked up staying ready out there right please just pray for this part of the country right they're still struggling with the situation and this is also some breaking news too for you guys that the port strike just ended right they suspended it to at least December now. So hopefully they can come to some type of agreement in 
that time frame, right? Most likely, hopefully, I don't know, it's only a few months, but that is the current breaking news is that the port strike is officially over for now. All right, so just giving you guys an update here. So that should help alleviate some of the supply snaggles that are happening right now with stuff coming in here because we're going to need a lot of stuff to rebuild these areas. And a lot of these things are imported. Not all of them, but a lot of them are. And even things like generators for disaster victims are getting snagged up in this supply chain chaos that's happening. So it's officially over. That's good. And they deployed the National Guard to the ports, right? And I think that put pressure on the unions to get it together, right? Because they probably realize, wait a minute, this is probably going to happen in multiple different states. They're going to start deploying the guard to the ports. They're just going to open the ports anyways. And then this is just going to accelerate automation, right? Now they have the excuse, all right, the military is running the ports and we're just going to automate the ports now if we can't get you guys back. So I think that put a lot of pressure on them. I think that was a smart move, deploying the National Guard to the ports, and it's officially over. So it's still going to take a week or two, hopefully just a week, right? Three full days of this strike going on four days, right, of this. So, and it started a little bit before everyone was shutting down before trains are being affected, grain cars are being affected, farmers harvesting their crops are being affected. There's a lot of stuff being affected right now. And it's going to take at least a week or two to get back to normal, right? So thank you guys. I hope you guys are staying safe and prepared out there. I hope you have big blessings for your life and your family. And I hope you have a big old blessed day.